All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Yinka Adam Benle, who is over in New York. How are you doing, Adinka? I am doing very well, John. It's a pleasure to be here today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, He's a former financial services professional turned author, excellent strategist and coach. And you're the author of the new book just came out in March, Job uh, King David's Top General Essential Lessons in Character, which is available on Amazon and all good booksellers. And what we're going to talk about today is Excellence in leadership, why finding your purpose is key to living a fulfilled life. And, and as, as we get into this, um, Yinka, um, purpose, right? I often think that most people don't know their purpose. Most people haven't actually figured out why they're doing what they're doing, what the purpose of it is. I mean, we know on a very superficial level, like I need a job or you provide for my family, whatever it is. But purpose um, that seems to be something that not a lot of people actually spend much time thinking about. Right. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we make purpose out to be this grandiose, you know, um, term, so to speak. And I don't think it should be so. So um, for me, purpose is just just having clarity on what it is that you're placed on this purpose, on this planet for, excuse me. So if what and whatever it is, you know, each person's purpose is different. Um, purpose evolves over time as well. So whatever it is, if you've been called to, um, I don't know, take care of your kids, mm -hmm. um, just do it to the best of your ability. You know, just making a, for it, for purpose to be, to for you to find fulfillment and purpose, you need to be making a positive dif difference somehow. You're giving back to humanity. And it has to be something that gives you um, fulfillment as well. So it's not just, you know, going somewhere to, to go, um, you know, mark off time because you need a paycheck, but are you making a difference? Are you adding value somehow? Are you adding um, your stamp to humanity? Yeah, and I think that's, I think that's, I think that's a great point and one to um, really, you know, uh, underline at the beginning here is that uh, purpose doesn't have to be grandiose. It doesn't have to be all this. Uh, it doesn't have to be something. It can be, I mean, providing you for your family is a great purpose. As long as that is, as long as you acknowledge that purpose and that is what really drives you and it doesn't like, it's not, there are not other things that are frustrating you, like that you really are focused and said, yes, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. And I also want to add as well, you know, purpose evolves because we are, we as human beings evolve. So, um, maybe for a, for that season, that could be your purpose. Maybe your purpose is you've been called to, I don't know, be a janitor, whatever it is for that season. And even just like you said, even as you have this um, um, other aspiration, as you have other goals, as you see yourself um, starting to strive for more. But you know what? That's good and that's great because as humans, we evolve as well. But while you're there as a janitor, while you're there as a, a mother, while you're there as a stay-at-home dad, wake up every day and do the very best. Be the best um, at whatever it is that you're doing as you strive for more and as you evolve over time. Yeah, and I think, again, I think that's a really important point, too, is the fact that um, it does evolve over time and, and situations and circumstances change but I think it's always a good thing. Um, would you uh, would you agree? It's a good thing is when you're starting to feel maybe frustrated, maybe things are getting on top of you, whatever, is to return to that purpose and sort of revisit it and say, OK, this is why I started doing this. And um, is it the same motivation? Is it the same purpose anymore or has it shifted and do I need to shift? Right. Yeah. I, you know, I greatly agree with that. It, and I think that has to do with that has a lot to do with clarity as well. Once you're you're clear on why you're doing what you're doing, even if it's if it's for that season, when things get overwhelming, when when you get frustrated, because you know we all humans, um, even people working in their for, in their purpose, they get frustrated. Um, things get overwhelming. But just again, going back to the why, going back to the why, um, you know that helps a great deal. So yes, I'm having a great a, a bad day. Yes, it's overwhelming, but just always going back to that why. And 
I'm also in, in addition to that, that's why I'm, I'm also a big believer in if, you know, if you have goals, if you have um, objectives, review them regularly so that, you know, you always know your why you have to review them regularly. So you understand why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then and the other part is, I mean, I know you talk about a lot about the, you know, the power of personal development. So it's one thing understanding your purpose. It's another thing, achieving your purpose and giving yourself the tools to be able to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, John, um, I am a strong believer in the fact that we are all gifted in one way or the other. We all have our we were placed on this on this planet um, with different gifts, different talents that you know we're called to use to serve humanity with. However, um, you know we get all of that in its raw form. We have to do our part. We have to um, fine tune them, and you know. And how do you do that? That you do that um, by committing to be a lifelong learner basically. So, and that is how we even get better clarity. That's why we better understand it's on that journey to better, um, to learning, you know, that commitment to lifelong learning. That's how we get to better understand and get better clarity on what our purpose and what our calling is. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, uh, and I think the thing that I often talk about here is that I don't think we invest enough in our own uh, personal or professional development. I mean, I think we oftentimes, um, you know, we invest more in our hobbies than we do in the things that actually, you know, propel our lives forward. Yeah, and then, you know, there's really, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, hobbies and all of that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I also want to, you know, add as well, because sometimes when you say personal development, it's almost like, oh, I have to go back to school. Yeah. And that's necessary if you have to. Or, oh, I have to go take some super expensive certification. You know, a lot of time it's not with that. It's just, okay, you know, this year or this month, I'm going to read I don't know, three books on I don't know, graphic design. If I feel, you know, I have a pension for that so I can become a better graphic designer. Well, you know what? I'm going to commit on my, I'm going to commit to listening to an hour of podcast, even like your podcast, you mm -hmm. know, to get better knowledge. If, you know, so I can better myself, basically. Again, it's just been intentional, knowing that, okay, you know what? We're here, we're even if we live to 100, that's still a very short time as, as far as I'm concerned. But um, making the time that we spend on this place count, not just existing, not just drifting through life, but making it count. And that takes a lot of intentionality. Yeah, and I think that's a great point there, the, the intentionality piece, because I, I mean, I do think sometimes we sleepwalk through things a little bit. And that we have to, again, we have to catch ourselves. And, be, and it's also because we live in this strange world, I think, where there's so much stuff going on and that we get ourselves really, really distracted. And it, 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 uh, it can take us off track and off our purpose because we're allowing all of this stuff to influence us. You know, we'll get caught up in social media, we get caught up in news cycle, all of this stuff. And it really deflects us often from our purpose. Yeah, that's true. And again, it goes back to being intentional. And, you know, it's hard because, you know, truth be told, some are, a lot of these gadgets, a lot of this after, they are designed to be addictive. Yeah, you know? So you have to be, you have to know that, you have to be cognizant of that and you do whatever it takes. Um, there are times when I have to, I go put my phone, if I'm working in the, in the office, I go put my phone somewhere else where it's not, it's not easily reachable, just so I can give whatever it is that I'm working on um, the attention and the dedication required um, for that project. And, you know, just doing what, you know, what it takes basically. And, um, you know, baby steps, you know, baby steps. Say maybe today, um, you know, if something I struggle with, you know what, I'm going to put the phone away for an hour and mm -hmm. just zone in on this and do what I have to do. Then maybe next week, you know, I'll take it up to two hours, but just getting things done. Realizing that, you know what, um, I'm the one in control, I, you know, I shouldn't let, you know, the apps and the, the gadgets control me, you know, being cognizant of those things and just looking for ways to be in control, to stay in control and to be consistent with that. Yeah, no, I think that's fantastic advice. Another thing is, uh, as you mentioned, is, uh, you know, making sure that you, you know, identify your strengths and, and leverage them. I think we often spend far too much time on our on what we perceive as our weaknesses and that unfortunately is a is almost a business culture thing um we're we're, we're kind of used to 
like doing performance appraisals at, at work and what happens at a performance appraisal they say oh john here there's a couple of things you're doing really well now here's 50 things that you need to work on and we always go away with the perception that we're in a debt we're in a major deficit uh, and part of that is because we don't focus on strengths and organizations don't focus on strengths and their managers and leaders don't focus on people's strengths oh that's a great point that is a great point and i'm i'm such a big believer in um part of clarity is knowing what you do very well mm -hmm. knowing what you do very well you, you can do everything very well but once you understand and know what you do very well those things that you don't do very well you know you can you can manage them you can maybe bring someone else onto your team that uh, makes up for that deficit but yeah you know um one, you know honing in and just focusing on your flaws your weaknesses um it's demoralizing um it demoralizing and it's um distracting as well because it takes your eyes off those things that you, you do very well um there's so many, like i said before you know we all gifted we all talented there are things that we do very well however um it's our responsibility to quickly identify those things as strengths and there are different ways to you know to do that um um you know at the assessment test and various ways to do that but once you identify those strengths just focus on developing those strengths because that is how you win that's how um you know that's your purpose that's part of your purpose that's how you win and then um for the the weakness you know some if you have to get someone on your team who's um good at that other than do what you have to do but don't focus so much on the weakness know the weaknesses but focus on your strengths those things that you do well yeah, and I think the other thing is to be is sometimes you have to self awareness comes into it because you have to sometimes admit to yourself. When I was when I was a kid growing up, uh, I played uh, soccer, football, right? Um, I always wanted to play centre forward. I want to be the goal scorer, but I was moved back to the centre of defence, and it turned out that that's really where my strength was. Um, but it took a while. I had to admit to myself, oh, okay, I'm not going to be the striker and the goal scorer. I'm going to be uh, kicking people uh, at the back, which uh, which is fine by me too. But but I'm just saying, when you take that into a bigger context, is sometimes that's the hard part where we have to admit to ourselves that maybe what we would like to do isn't what we're best at, and we have to embrace our strengths. Yeah, yeah, and that's you know, it, I know it takes a lot of humility, and mm -hmm. that's strength, you know. I um, I personally, that's strength. That's a a leader that actually or a person that knows what they can do or what they're good at and what they're not that's a great um sense of strength there is no point in going around um pretending to, to be what you're not when everyone else knows that okay this is what you're um you're good at and just think of how you're changing yourself because now you have to compensate you have to work probably 10 times harder to <laughs> to make up for that deficit as opposed to you just again you know now you, you know what the things that you're good at and just running with that you know and it comes easy you're able to do that with ease with grace because that is what you're good at mm -hmm. yeah no and, and i think it I, I like i think it is very powerful i mean i've had it in in the past you know in 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 job interviews or stuff where you know once they've been explaining parts of the job i mean i've had to say yeah, that doesn't really sound like me. That's not really my strength. It's really over here. But if that's not the majority of the job, if that's the majority of the job, then I'm probably the wrong person for you. You know, and that it's so funny that you brought up that example because I just um, I had a very similar experience with a potential client that reached out to me, and so she just you know in, in the email she you know she just she gave like a brief overview of what she needed help with. And immediately, it wasn't a lengthy email. And I, and I said to her, I said, you know, I'm probably not the um, the right coach for you. And then I explained, you know, those areas that I specialize in. Mm -hmm. And then she got back to me immediately and she better explained, you know, her problem area. And we ended up realizing that I was a good fit. So, but if I just said, oh, okay, yeah, just come on on, you know, I'll take you on. But no, immediately, I was like, you know, I might not be, um, my intention was to refer her back, refer her to another coach that might be a better fit. But then when she um, responded to my email and she explained, better explained, and it turned out to be a, a great fit. You know, we had a Zoom session and it turned out to be a, a fantastic fit. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that story because again, um, by doing that, what you did immediately was you established trust, uh, credibility, 
and and then obviously she wanted to explore it more. But I mean, that's a great that's a great example of, of establishing trust by being honest. Yeah, yeah, because you're not, you know, we're not good at everything. We're not good at everything. There's no point in taking on something that you're not good at. And then, you know, it's overwhelming. You're stressed. You're not even doing it well. You're not doing it with excellence. And then, you know, it's too late to, to back out because you already said no. So um, just, again, understanding yourself, um, you know, having that clarity, you know, knowing what your strengths are, that would save you a lot of headache down the road. Yeah. And then there's also, um, you know, time management and where you put your focus, because I think this is another key thing is where you put your focus. And as I mentioned earlier, we live in a, I mean, people always say, oh, I'm busier than I've ever been. And I always say, no, I think we're much more distracted than we've ever been. I think there's a difference. Um, And so it's very hard to, you know, you have to struggle to like keep your focus and manage your time and all of that stuff. And I think that's really critical for people because I think they allow themselves get so distracted and then perceive themselves to be overwhelmed and busier than ever. You know, yeah, that's key. That's key. And um, that was something I struggled with in the past as well. Just trying to, you know, juggle family life. I'm, you know, a mom of three and, you know, the business and all of those other things. But um, again, I really had to just hone in and find a system that works for me. So one of the things that I do, um, I, I, I plan, planning the big part of my everyday life, just otherwise something will fall through the crack basically. But even though, you know, I plan and then I chunk my time as well. So um, say from nine to 12, I'm just focusing on my business and then, you know, everything else comes after that. However, um, I'm still flexible because life happens. Yeah. Um, life happens. I could get a call from school. You know, my husband, um, he works out of the house, but I could get a call from school saying, come pick up one of the kids. So just, you know, planning, again, being intentional and, um, you know, and still understand that, you know, life happens. But you get more done. You're more productive as a person. You're more efficient as well when you plan your time. When you plan your timing and you, you know, you're cognizant of how you're using your time as opposed to just drifting through and just, you know, whatever happens, happens. No, you'll never get anything done that way. Yeah, you know, just being reactive, um, you know, you'll always be behind, you'll always be behind the eight ball. Um, But to your point is, yeah, it's not planning for the sake of planning. It's planning to organize yourself, but also to allow for that flexibility, because as you say, life gets in the way priorities change and i think that's another and then that's another key part and maybe the last one to focus in on is that whole concept of being flexible right and there's a difference between being flexible and being all over the place right um, obviously but i think more than ever going forward there is that need for for flexibility so be organized but also be very flexible because i mean it's getting crazier and crazier and you never know what's coming at you so the ability to be able to embrace it and be and flex with it as opposed to get overwhelmed by it i think that's a key um, strength going forward yeah, absolutely. Because change is a constant. Change is a constant. And so just knowing that and just being ready to um, embrace it, it will save you a lot of headache and heartache um, down the line. And, you know, yeah, I'm a big believer in goals. You know, I set goals and objectives and all of that. However, I'm not so much attached to how I achieve those goals because you know I might think okay this is the one way of doing it or this is the one way that will the route that will take me to that particular goal but what if you know there could be 10 other different ways even way better than mine so I'm not um you know I'm not married to the the the, the way I get there but you know I just have my goals in front of me and I'm open to however I get there yeah, no, that's what I always say to people is don't get married to your projects, don't get married to your guys, <laughs> because everything is uh, everything is changeable um, right now. Hey, listen, Inca, this has been fantastic. All of Yinka's information is going to be below this video and links to her book, etc. Before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Hi, yes, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Oh, oh it's my pleasure. <laughs> what a great conversation. Well, yeah, so again, my name is Yinka Adebinle. I'm an excellent strategist and coach and a new author, um, like John just said. And basically what I do, I help my clients um, find clarity. I help them to uncover pain points, bottlenecks that might be standing in the way of them living a life of fulfillment, living um, an excellent life, basically. So just helping them develop systems, habits that will take them from that, from those areas where they struggle to just finding fulfillment 
and living a life of excellence because I believe that um, it's impossible to find fulfillment in life if you're not being your very best on a daily basis in all areas of life and which is which is what excellence is. Yeah, listen, fantastic. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching and listening and I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.